Welcome back to another episode of Food and Marriage. I'm Jermaine. And I'm Brianna. Today we're going to be cooking what a lot of people think would be the best post-quarantine meal. I include steak and lobster tails. A bone-in ribeye steak to be exact. And I'm going to take you through step-by-step -step how to prepare it. We hope you enjoy it. Please like and subscribe. We'll see you soon. Today we're cooking my favorite, a bone-in ribeye. We're going to season it using the dry brine method. Dry brining is simply pre-salting your meat and placing it in the fridge, I suggest, for 24 hours. Today, I'm only using salt and finishing with garlic, butter, and rosemary. You'll want to use the same amount of salt that you would normally use to season your steak. No more, no less. Today, we are cooking a pretty thick cut, so of course, you need to be generous with it. For the lobster tails, we have garlic, Dijon mustard, butter, black pepper, parsley, and salt. I like to use grapeseed oil when I cook. It has no flavor and it's perfect for high heat. So of course I started the skillet around temperature of 325. Go ahead and place the lobster tails inside the skillet. When I start cooking them up, it already started smelling amazing, even without any additional seasoning. Now I've never had lobster tails before or cooked them. Um, how do you know when they're finished cooking? You'll see the color turn red. Uh, as we continue watching this to cook, um, the temperature will allow them just to turn red. So there is a little bit more of a brown right now. Mm -hmm. But you can see that beautiful red that uh, lets you know that they're ready. Okay. You add your butter in, you add your garlic, you put your Dijon mustard. Now, if I were to do this again, I will place separately my butter, Dijon mustard, and garlic in a separate bowl, mix it up, and then place it into the, the skillet. Put it all together. Yeah, but right, doing it this way, it got a little bit messy, but it's still, the results were still really tasty. I always add my black pepper towards the end for something like this. Now, I do regret not having any lemon to place over the lobster tails, but I didn't have any lemon, so do with what you have, right? Oh, they are a nice red color now. Now, I remember when we were cooking this, the neighbor was mowing his lawn, and he just stopped all of a sudden and said, what is that smell? It smelled great. <laughs> you have to try this recipe. And he was not going to leave until we told him what we were cooking. The steak has been cooking on a lower temperature for a good bit. What we're going to do here is it's a reverse sear. So we're cooking it slowly. And then we're going to sear it towards the end. So I'm going to clean the grill off. Knock the heat up to over 700 degrees and it continue to get hotter. And then we go and place our steak onto the grill. It smelled delicious. It was crazy. We have our rosemary, garlic, and butter, which we're going to place onto the grill and allow it to melt. And then we're going to baste our steak to give it that amazing flavor. You can see those flames. Do not be scared of flames. Flames are great when it comes to grills. As long as you can control it. Just look at that. Look at that. And here I'm taking the rosemary. If I had time, I would use rosemary in time. We have our rosemary, and I'm gonna continue to dip the rosemary in the butter and garlic and baste our steak. Again, do not be afraid of those flames. They are great flames. And remember, I only season the steak using the dry brine method, only salt. I wanted to, to try just the salt steak without putting garlic powder and pepper, black pepper, which I usually do. But no regrets on this steak, it was, it was delicious. Look at the crust. What do you think about that crust? So, my go, Let's see what happens. Love it. Good. Good. 